Hi, this is Eric Fox Jackson, and this is Vector Drawing Tips for Traditional Artists. Most artists seem to have problems with uh, drawing in Adobe Illustrator or using vector artwork, even if they're, uh, you know, adept with a program like Photoshop. Uh, Adobe Illustrator tends to be very different from most drawing programs, and it's because primarily most people use the pen tool. And in, uh, I'm going to be using this image I drew here. Uh, in Photoshop in the substitution of a sketch because a sketch might be too light. Uh, now most people would take the pen tool and begin making points uh, and trying to actuate the curves that they want and accurately get the shape that they want. But there's a, a myriad of other tools uh, that you could use in Adobe Illustrator uh, there's the pencil tool, which you'll see here. I'm using my mouse as opposed to a, uh, a tablet. You can just simply draw in the shape that you want to make. And you can change the settings. So fidelity, which is uh, how accurately it resembles your uh, mouse stroke or uh, if you're using a tablet, which I am not because uh, it gets in the way of my microphone, um, it will uh, it will go with accurately within this number of pixels. Now, the reason you'd want to do this is because if you don't have a steady hand or your mouse sensitivity is very high, like uh, like mine is, and I can't make a proper line, uh, you're going to want to set this higher to say five or something like that. I'm just going to leave it at the default 2.5 for when I do use my tablet. Um, as well as there's smoothness, which uh, accurately changes uh, how smooth the, um, the pencil tool will create a path. Uh, both of these are very good in order to uh, avoid these jagged points that you'll see here. Uh, it creates more clean arcs and whatnot. Uh, it also reduces file size, as you'd imagine, less points, uh, smaller file size. Now what you'll see here is the options. What we have is fill new pencil strokes, which will have uh, make it so when you create a new pencil stroke it'll be filled. Um, there's keep selected, which means that uh, the selected uh, stroke you've made will uh, will stay um, when you go to make a new stroke. Uh, otherwise, it'll just create new strokes until uh, until it's finished. And uh, the last and best part is edit selected paths. Uh, what you can do here is if I don't like exactly how this path ends here, I could always just edit it like that and change uh, minor parts of the path, um, even extend the path beyond, uh, far beyond where it is now. Um, now, a drawback to this is if I were to draw the entire head, which I'll just uh, sketch out very poorly right now, if I select all these paths here, now I've made a multitude of paths, um, if you draw close enough to the select path, it'll continue just making uh, one nice clean path, which uh, can look really great. But say I have these uh, several sketchy lines, if I want to fill these, it's going to look like that. And it's only going to fill uh, from this point to this point, and from this point to this point. Uh, now, what we can do here, and a lot of people are unaware of this uh, technology, um, I'm going to go back here, uh, I'm going to delete these, and I'm going to um, call up a object I made earlier, which I'm going to do um, Control-Alt-3, or Show-All, to show the objects that I hid earlier. Now, what we have here is uh, three paths none of which are connected, and I'm going to try to fill the color. But instead of using the fill option over here, I'm going to use 
the live paint bucket, or K for, uh, I guess you can remember that for bucket. Uh, there's a K in there, it's a pretty strong part of the word. Um, and you can select that. Well, first select these paths here. Select the uh, live paint bucket tool. And you can click in here. Now you're going to realize when you click, nothing's going to happen. Uh, these objects are grouped properly. Um, it even made it into a, a live paint object, but it's not working properly. Um, so what we can do is we can go into gap options, which is uh, shown by this options icon that they use for many things in Adobe Illustrator. And we can change the gap detection from small gaps to large gaps. There's even a uh, a custom and it'll say gaps found so I'll show you three here and if I go to small it doesn't show those let's see what, how big these gaps are they don't show up for medium yeah these are large gaps um, it should be noted that uh, the filling of gaps is going to just be a straight line so sometimes it's not the uh, best bet but for what we're doing right now it is so you'll see now it's lighting up red um, now I can fill it with whatever color I like. I'm going to select uh, this uh, tan color here, this this brown. Maybe I'll edit it to make uh, the final I made in Photoshop. The uh, girl has very fair skin, so I'll do it like that. Very fair skin. And I'll click in here, and now it's filled the object. Now, obviously, uh, you'll see I didn't put much uh, effort into drawing this for uh, time's sake, but this would be how you uh, how you work with the sketch uh, in Adobe Illustrator. And now, once you've uh, began to work with this sketch, I'm just going to set this. Uh, once you um, <clears throat> once you have the object that you're finished working with, um, and you finish filling it, and uh, say I filled this whole body, seeing as this is a uh, nude model, and uh, the whole. Uh, body color would be a similar color. Um, you would go to expand. Now this is going to expand all these objects into solid fills. If I undo, you'll see that's not a solid fill, and when I redo, it is indeed a solid fill. So what you can do now is ungroup these objects, and now you'll have these solid lines. I want to ungrouped a little bit too much, you can regroup that there. And you can move these solid lines out of the way. I'm just going to select the uh, the fill color and I'm going to set that to multiply and that will allow me to see the strokes beneath it. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start drawing the shading based off of my sketch here. So you can use the pencil tool uh, as I did earlier. I'm just going to use the uh, the pen tool, and I'm going to trace the uh, the sketch marks I made earlier, lineating the shape of the uh, of the surface of the skin. And I'm going to follow along here. Oops, let's click that. And I'm going to follow along the shape of the face, actuate <coughs> accentuating those curves, and did it again. And I'm going to click over here, and there's my final point. I'll make it a little, uh, go to my color palette here. I'll, uh, if you hold um, control or command in a uh, Mac, uh, you can uh, saturate the object, the color a little bit more. So there we go, I saturated the color without adding black to it, because black tends to muddy it up. If you add too much, I'll just add uh, you know, three black to keep it calm. I'll add a little blue, seeing as our face is a warm color. It seems like we have a warm light, so this will desaturate a little bit and uh, be more indicative of how the shadow would be. I'm going to do the Gaussian Blur in Effect Gaussian Blur for using a newer version of InDesign. It's, uh, it may be just Filter. I'm um, sorry, a uh, newer version of Illustrator. It may just be Filter. And I'm going to set it to 3 pixels. And that's going to set a nice uh, shade there for us. I'm going to 
copy this uh, fill object from earlier. Go to Edit, Copy, or Control C, and I'm going to do uh, Paste in front, which is going to be Control or Command F, and bring this all the way to the front here. And I'm going to select this uh, shadow object uh, as well. So Shift Select, and go to Object. Clipping path, make or control 7, as I always do. And now you've made a nice shadow that works with your sketch and really, um, really uh, starts to reflect some of your uh, initial artwork as opposed to just being um, the pen sketch. Uh, I'm sorry. The, uh, the pen tool and this is uh, this is exactly what you want so once again my name is Eric and this has been a tutorial for uh, traditional artists to do vector artwork thank you very much